What? What? I think it's Tuesday tip time. I think it's Tuesday tip time. I think it's Tuesday tip time. <laughs> What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the tips of Tuesday. Today's mug is, you got this? Whatever you done need to get, you got it. So this is just a reminder for you in case you were wondering, do I have it? Do I not have it? Mug says you got it. Mug says you got it. Okay, so here we are for the tips of Tuesday. We're going to talk about procrastination, why you do it, and how to stop. Uh, <laughs> I am excited about this topic because so many of us procrastinate, and some of that is completely normal, but some, for some of us, procrastination causes stress, problems, worries, concerns, and so if you are someone who is feeling like I'm procrastinating on the things that matter and it's really bothering me, it's upsetting me, I wanna talk about that today, about where that's coming from, about why it's happening, and what to do about it so that you can walk away from this video today having some really concrete strategies, or at least one concrete strategy, to help you do the thing that you want to do. And if you're just joining the live Tuesday Tips, please type in and say hello, I love to see your your lovely faces and um, your notes and your questions. I always take a look at those. Um, so please, please, please say hello. And especially for those of you who are going to be in Miami next week, let me know so I can look out for you. Um, hi, everybody. Hi, Liz and Hannah and Megan. Deborah, what's up? Welcome. We're talking procrastination today for those of you who are just joining. Um, and just a reminder, if you're having a tough time, if you're not sure if you can handle a particular situation, um, the mug today says that in fact you can, that actually you got this. You got this. Uh, so just so you know, welcome everybody, Madeline, Nikki, Whitney, what's up? Kira, hey, hey. Evansha, hello, welcome, welcome. Let's talk about procrastination. So I, I, I took a look around and my team did a little research on procrastination. This is something that we're going to be talking about a little bit at HCI Live next week. But, you know, everyone procrastinates sometimes. But about 20% of people, according to Psychology Today, very official source, uh, that 20% um, of people chronically avoid difficult tasks, deliberately look for distractions, and let's be honest, how easy is it now, more than ever before, to distract ourselves, to like open Pinterest, to look at Facebook, to um, do anything other than what it is we're supposed to do. Distraction is like one of the number one challenges that we have today. Um, welcome everybody. Hi, come on in, come on in. I'm so excited to be with you. By the way, um, we're going to have a little break in Tuesday tips. I'm going to be going to the HCI Live Miami event and then I'm actually taking a vacation. What? I never do that. I always procrastinate on taking a vacation. So I'm going to be taking one. So I'll be in Florida for a couple of weeks chilling at the beach with my family. So this is one of our final Tuesday tips. This is our final one until June 6th. There'll be some, you know, throwbacks and such and such, but it's exciting to be here with you live today because it'll be a little while. Okay, so 20% um, of people chronically avoid difficult tasks, deliberately look for distractions. <laughs> They're everywhere. Um, so the, the interesting thing to note about procrastination for most of us, right, is that it happens when we let the feeling of I don't feel like it take precedence over our goals. And that's, uh, <laughs> Stephanie, beach time is my favorite time. Yes, yes. Uh, for those of you that might follow me on Instagram at Carrie Coaches, um, I posted a, an old picture of me in sixth grade um, on the beach and it was really pretty funny with a big perm and huge sunglasses and <sighs> if you want a good laugh take a look um, okay so procrastination happens when the feeling of I don't feel like it takes precedence over a goal right and so we just end up putting something off 
And then we start going into a bit of a negative headspace about it and a downward spiral of negative emotions. And when we're in that downward spiral of negative emotions, are we necessarily motivated to take the action that we're supposed to take? Well, sometimes some people are motivated by that, but others, it's like a, it's sort of like a, a vicious cycle of you know, like, I don't feel like it. I'm not going to do it. And oh, I didn't do it. I'm so awful. I'm never going to do it. I'm a terrible person. I'm never going to get what I want. I'm everybody's right about me. I'm never going to do whatever I think I'm going to do. It's all a pipe dream. And we can go down into like the rabbit hole of self-loathing because of procrastination. So let's look at why this happens. Hi, everyone. Hi, Lucy and Pamela and Stephanie and Patty. Hi, everyone. Okay, so um, why do people do it? The number one reason for procrastination is really fear. A fear of failure, mostly. So this is a big, big, big one. And if you're someone who happens to be like me and you're uh, a recovering perfectionist, or maybe you haven't even gotten to the point of recovery yet, <laughs> my having a child has forced me to the edge of recovery of perfectionism. It's not possible anymore. It never is, never was possible. But um, so also from Psychology Today, this this uh, Psychology Today magazine. Perfectionists are often procrastinators because it is psychologically more acceptable to never tackle a task than to face the possibility of falling short. So fear of failure is a huge reason for procrastination. Um, another thing, uh, another sort of brand of, of procrastination is uh, waiting until the time is right. And that's um, a really good justification. I actually, I'm supposed to take some photos um, of myself. <laughs> it's not gonna be me taking photos of my, someone's taking pictures of me in about a month or so, and I really wanna put it off. I wanna procrastinate. I'm it's like, oh, I still, you know, I'm still working on this body after having a baby. And I think, ah, I just, I just wanna put it off. The time isn't right. It's just not the right time. I want to wait until such and such. But the truth is, it's just afraid. I'm just afraid that the pictures aren't going to look good. So what we have to look at when we're thinking about waiting until the time is right is what's that really about? What are we afraid of in terms of something that won't be uh, of a perfect standard or it won't, it'll feel like failure. Because if for a perfectionist, if it's not perfect, it feels like failure because perfectionists think in all or nothing, uh, all or nothing kinds of thoughts, right? I'm seeing people <laughs> saying you're totally describing me, totally describing me. Um, I love it. Uh, and Monique, my OCD is out of hand, but I'm not a procrastinator. Hey, that's a win. <laughs> awesome. Um, so think about something that you're, you're waiting for the right time for. Maybe it is photos for you. Maybe it's trying video. Maybe you want to try a Facebook Live. I'm going to wait till the time is right. I'm going to wait till the time is right. Um, maybe you're looking to enroll in a training, like become a health coach, waiting until the time is right, waiting until the time is right. You know, there's a sense of when we're waiting until the time is right, sometimes too, we don't, we're just not trusting ourselves. We don't trust ourselves to make the right decision at the right time frame. Um, and so we are afraid, it still goes back to fear of failure, because if you don't trust yourself, then what are you afraid is going to happen? You're afraid you're going to make a decision, it's going to be the wrong one, and that you're somehow going to fail. So it always circles back to a fear of failure. If you're looking to make any kind of change in your life, but you feel like the time isn't right, looking at what are you really waiting for? What are you... When you say the t waiting for the time to be right, what is that easier than saying? For me, it's easier than saying, I just really don't want to see another picture of myself. <laughs> waiting for this after having a baby, like, oh, I can't take it anymore. But, I, but it's easier to say the time isn't right than to face that. So for you, if there's something on the horizon, big or small, that you're looking to do, 
what what's really underneath saying I'm waiting until the time is right. Another uh, way this might show up in terms of fear or failure, um, it's sort of the cousin of, uh, of procrastination, then that is a feeling of being behind. So if you are in a training or you're engaged in some sort of process where you're looking to achieve a particular outcome, but you're behind or you feel that you're behind. As a matter of fact, speaking of uh, the whole baby weight issue, at 18 months I'm going, I'm behind. This should be gone. Like, why is this taking so long? And if anyone was taking all the effort that I'm taking, they'd be so skinny. What's going on? I'm behind. And the question is, behind what? Like, whose timeline are you on? Your body, my body may not be on the same timeline that I'm on. And my timeline is sort of externally, in, uh, it's, it's externally sourced. So I'll look at other moms and be like, well, they don't look like they had a baby and they've, they've, their kid is seven months old. You know, not everybody is like that. Everybody uh, has a different experience after having a baby. But ultimately, you want to look at this question of every time you're feeling behind, in a training or in whatever it is that you want, the question you want to ask yourself is behind what? And like whose definition of behind? Where is this idea coming from? In our Become a Health Coach training, so people enroll into the training to become a health coach. I'm sure that's a shocker to you. <laughs> it's called Become a Health Coach. But they, they enroll and uh, there's a year to complete from the beginning of the, their start date of their course. The course is designed for adults. Adults have life responsibilities. If we had nothing to do but attend class and, and study, you'd be on top of everything. But the truth is that is not reality at all. So you have to look at yourself and, uh, and say, what am I expecting of myself that is not reasonable to expect? So in the course, people might feel like, I'm behind, I'm not doing enough, I'm behind. What's underneath that? I'm going to fail. I'm going to fail. This isn't going to work. I'm going to fail. I'm going to fail. So you see how I'm behind and procrastination are almost like they're kissing cousins, right? Uh, because the fear underneath is really very similar. And the, the negative downward spiral of emotion that we can go into as a result um, is very similar. So here's a really interesting question. If you think about procrastination, um, and you think about, like we, we talked about perfectionism, right? There's a fear of it not being perfect, so we just don't do it. I'm behind. There's a fear of not doing enough work and not being on top of things enough, so somehow it's gonna, I'm gonna fail and disappoint myself and other people. Um, there's waiting until the time is right, which is a really easy, you know, a, a good cover up. <laughs> so in all these different sort of ways that a fear of failure or procrastination shows itself, at the end of the day, all of these ways of procrastinating or talking to ourselves about procrastination are excellent strategies for beating ourselves up. Sorry, that just hit me. Hit me a little today. You got this. <laughs> I got this. So when we're feeling, when we're feeling like we are, we are struggling or having a hard time or, or uh, uh, um, trying to get to an outcome that we're not at yet, and then we decide I, I should have waited until the time is right. I'm going to beat myself up. I'm. Uh, 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 um, I didn't make the right decision, I'm going to fail. All of the stuff around procrastination is a great way to feel like crap about ourselves. It's a great way to do it. And think about this, if you didn't procrastinate, how else would you find a way to tell yourself that you're bad, you suck, you're not doing enough, you're not keeping up, and you're never, it's never gonna work for you? How else would you do that? Where else would you be creating the experience of, I'm awful, <laughs> I'm not good enough? 
So procrastination in some ways, like it's kind of useful because we get to create the experience of something that, that sort of um, proves our inner like fears and thoughts about ourselves, which is we're not enough and we suck. And that what we want is never gonna happen. We're never gonna get to have the life that, that, that we dream of, that other people were right about me and my dreams. So procrastination is loaded, right? This is a, this is a loaded strategy. <laughs> Thank you everybody for your awesome comments. <laughs> for recesses, stop poking holes. <laughs> I love it. So if you're not procrastinating, you know, another thing that procrastination can create, you know, when you leave things to the last minute, you, that, impacts other people. Maybe it causes chaos at home. Maybe it causes chaos at work. Maybe people are feeling like, oh my gosh, you're always doing things at the last minute. Can I depend on you? Can I not depend on you? It sort of creates this feeling of chaos, right? And a feeling of, can I be depended on? Am I someone to be trusted? And if you don't have the chaos that procrastination causes, how else are you going to uh, we, it's like we're projecting out into the world our own fear that we, that I'm like, I can't be trusted. I'm worried that I can't be trusted. And now someone outside of me is saying that to me. And I go, oh, it's true. I can't be trusted. I can't be trusted. You know, one of the things that uh, Stacy and I talk about a lot is what is, what is really, what is freedom? What is the experience of freedom? And uh, oftentimes we land on the feeling that true freedom is trust in oneself. So often we don't trust ourselves, we don't trust our decisions, and, and, and instead of looking really directly at that, we can procrastinate and create chaos and create problems and beat ourselves up and you know, have this whole sort of cyclone of stuff going on instead of going, what is it that tells me, how is it that I know to not trust myself? And is that right? Like I. I I'm actually, I'm actually, you know, I watch my, my 18 month old um, and she picks things up so fast. She's so smart. And I think here's this kid who somehow got herself out of a womb, <laughs> like learn to roll and crawl and see things and talk and walk. And I think we are geniuses. This is an 18 month old and we've all been through that and we're geniuses. And yet somehow through the course of life, we forget we forget how genius we are. We don't believe in ourselves and we don't trust ourselves. So when it comes to maybe you might be procrastinating because there's a task that you need to learn, you don't wanna learn it. Maybe social media, maybe technology, maybe there's something where you're like, I just don't know how to do X, Y, Z, and I don't believe that I can figure it out. But it's like, you figured out how to walk and talk and eat and take care of yourself and you got through some kind of school and you've navigated I don't know how many complex situations in your life. You, you can do it, actually. You can do it. You got this. Because we've figured out a lot that's far harder than how to put up an Instagram page. <laughs> Especially when you can find that on Google. <laughs> Thank you so much for all your awesome comments. Oh, Monica, you're talking directly to me. Yep, I hear that, girl. Pamela. <laughs> <sighs> so, when it comes to procrastination, we can think about it like we think about all kinds of behavior as, as coaches. And if you're someone who's becoming a coach, then you can start to think about it this way, that they're habits of thought. Patterns around procrastination are habits of thought. And when it comes to habits of thought, the good news is you can change the habits. You have to be willing to look under the hood and go, what is going on under there <laughs> for reals? But then you can start to shift the habits. So let's talk about that. 
How do you shift those habits? Actually, first, let's talk about a couple other reasons for procrastination. So we talked about fear of a task. Sometimes something seems really intimidating, like if you have to have a difficult conversation with someone, oh, that can feel really hard to do as so you want to put it off. Um, so if you have a task that you need to do, you've been putting it off because you're afraid. Uh, I, I totally understand. I have a couple of those things lurking in my life right now. First thing to do is just chunk it down. What is this task? What are the actual things that need to happen? So once you have that broken out, then you can just get help. This is such a huge, huge, huge thing for all of us. I, we, we so often feel that we have to figure everything out by ourselves and we really don't, we don't. And by asking for help, it doesn't mean you don't got it. It means you do got it because you're asking, you're proactively getting what you need so you can get something accomplished. Um, there's a particular conversation that I have to have that's going to be challenging. And I, I, I feel like I've asked everybody and their mother for help about how to have this conversation. Um, so get help and don't, don't feel like that's showing weakness. It's not. The other thing when it comes to a task and fearing a task, you know, it depends on the kind of tasks. There's sort of mechanical type of how-to nuts and bolts things. And then there's something that you might need to do that's creative. Like maybe you need to do a Facebook Live video. Maybe you need to um, write an article. Maybe you're wanting to write a book. Maybe you're wanting to express yourself in a particular way in your business or in your personal life. And the thing that you need to accomplish is really creative. I find that creative tasks just aren't linear. It's, it's not easy to sit down to a blank piece of paper or a blank you know, document and like bang out a creative task and just be done with it. There's a way in which I need to do a little bit of it, go away, do a little bit of it, go away, do a little bit of it, go away. And that's kind of the, pro I come to learn that I have that process around creative tasks. And when I go away from whatever it is I'm working on, like for example, I was working on um, the opening of HCI Live next week in Miami and, and having a lot of really powerful things that, want, that I wanted to express, but I wasn't sure how. And so I'd start a little bit, like here's a couple paragraphs or here's a couple bullets. And then I'd go away, maybe run an errand, take a short walk, go to my gym on the elliptical. And when I go away, I just sort of ask in my head to, to that which is greater, like, help me with some inspiration on this particular thing. So it, that's, not, that's not procrastination. That's a process that's creative. Um, and, and that we, we get to give ourselves the space now, I still have a deadline. I mean, the event is next week. <laughs> I have to have the opening done. But the way in which I get there is probably not going to be linear. So if you do have something creative yesterday, uh, yesterday, today that you need to do, to be able to honor that, that creative process and not beat yourself up going like, I should be sitting down right now and writing, that actually when you're walking away from the task for a little bit, that which is greater and other things are moving around to bring you the inspiration that you're looking for. So I think that's important to point out. Another reason to procrastinate is sometimes you can be really bored with the task at hand. I mean, some things are just boring. When it comes to building your business, there are things that you may have to do that are, you don't like um, at home. I mean, my gosh, I laundry, like I just don't want to do it. Cleaning something, no. <laughs> Cooking, I don't want to do it. That's for me. Some of you might love doing those things, any of those things. Um, so what you want to look at when you're really, really bored with a task, you can't find inspiration around it, you just can't, it's, it's tough. You want to look at can you delegate it? Is it possible to ask somebody else to do it? Um, is it possible to hire somebody else to do it? you may or may not be in a position to do that. If you can't hire someone, is there someone you can ask? Is there a cousin, a niece, a nephew, a spouse, a child to say, hey, can you do X, Y, Z for me? Um, and this is, again, asking for help, which is important. Um, if you're super, 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 super bored with a task, you ask yourself, do I really have to do this? Do I have to do it? Can it be deleted? I mean, if, if I didn't do it, would the world fall apart? Sometimes the answer is, yeah, I mean, the wood, 
not the world falling apart, but something like paying bills. You may not love doing it, but it has to be done. So you can't delete that, but you could delegate it. So looking at seeing, all right, what are the options? And finally, if you can't delegate it, if you can't get rid of it altogether, then you find a way to make it fun. And if that means that you're folding laundry in your underwear with a pair of heels on and a, a goofy sunglasses uh, with music playing and singing at the top of your lungs, so be it. Then you're having fun. Then it's interesting. <laughs> Same with your business. Like there are going to be things that you don't want to do. Not every day is Christmas and roses when you're running your own business. There are little tedious tasks that have to be done. So how can you make it fun? How can you make it fun? That's the question. So that you don't have to procrastinate and you can just get through it. Um, another reason for procrastination is sometimes people will say, I work better under pressure. Sometimes that's may not be true, but sometimes it is. There are people who work better under pressure. The problem is they may or may not accept that about themselves. So they may be beating themselves up. So if they have a deadline and they really, really work best within like 24 hours of the deadline, but they have seven days to the deadline, they might beat themselves up for six days and then do amazing work in the 24 hours. So if you're someone who really, really does work better under pressure, let go of the beating yourself up for six days and just do the awesome work in 24 hours. And you can help the people around you, whether it's your family or your support team or whatever, understand like, hey, I work best at the last minute. So how can we set things up in our life and in my calendar in particular so that I can have the last minute uh, time to do the stuff I want to do and that so people around you aren't necessarily freaking out. Um, going, oh, is she going to get it done? Yes, I'm going to get it done. I do my best work at the last minute. <laughs> okay. Um, so, so let's talk about what's something that you might be procrastinating on right now. Let me know in the chat. What might you be procrastinating on? Mm, one thing I'm procrastinating on is packing um, for Florida. So after our live event, I'm going to be going on this beach vacation, which is so lovely. But of course, for those of you who have traveled with a toddler, uh, the stuff, <laughs> oh my gosh, the amount of stuff, the packing list is like a mile long. So I'm like, uh, I'm just dreading it. So skills labs, my schoolwork, yeah. What else are you procrastinating on? Doing a Facebook Live, yes, oh my gosh. I was so scared I had to be dragged. But once you do it, it really is easier than you might think. Creating a contract for clients, packing for HCI Live, Packing for each other, yeah. Uh, preparing a workshop I'm scheduled to do next week, yeah. Starting a blog, yeah. Following up with a prospect, that's a good one. Um, clearing the clutter for my house, yeah. Doing something live. So, so we've all got some stuff that we're we're procrastinating on. Moving, yeah. That moving's awful. <laughs> BHC in general, yeah. Okay, so let's talk about what you can do to beat procrastination a little bit. One, you know what's underneath it, and that alone is, is enough to make a massive shift. To understand that fears of, fear of failure is just massive. Um, and, and if that's up for you, at least you can have compassion for yourself and go, yeah, well, of course I would procrastinate. I'd rather do that than face my fear. So. Let's talk about what to do to, to move past this. So the first is to make a decision. So Pamela, for example, you want to create a home business, but you've been procrastinating on it. So the first thing that you'd want to do now, today, is say, I'm ready to make a change, and I've decided I'm making a change now. For everything always starts with a decision. A decision is always the first step. And the truth is, you don't have to make that decision today. You want to ask yourself the question, am I ready to make this decision today to create a home business and take a step in that direction? I'm ready to make a change. Many of you are ready to make a change. You're dying to make a change. I would encourage you to say yes to making a change. <laughs> so the first step is to make the decision. 
The second step is really important. This comes from an article, the Psychology Today article that I was referring to, um, that we need to forget about whether or not we feel like doing a task. So the, the quote from the article is, most of us seem to tacitly believe that our emotional state has to match the task at hand. But that's just not true. The author of the article says, I have to recognize that I'm rarely going to feel like doing certain things, and it doesn't matter if I don't feel like it. So this is really interesting. Instead of feeling like, oh, I have to feel, I have to feel like doing X, Y, Z. No, you just need to sit down and do it. Uh, so for example, if you are a writer, um, one of the things that is probably very important for you to do is write. Um, great, I don't feel like writing. Well, but this morning is my routine. Like I write in the morning, that's what I do. One of the things I've actually been really procrastinating on is meditation. So, but I don't feel like it, and I'm using that excuse all the time. But the fact of the matter is, in my daily routine, I need to set it up, so this is the time for meditation, and when I say to myself, I don't feel like it, I can, I can reply, well, that's nice, and then sit down and meditate anyway. Yeah. So we have to stop tying the need to feel like doing a task to actually doing the task. And the same is with being afraid. You know, um, if you're about to enroll and become a health coach training, or if you're about to enroll in any training, you're gonna be afraid. So if you're waiting until you're not afraid, you're gonna be waiting a very long time. So we want to separate sometimes the feeling from the task. The third step, uh, so we talked about making a decision, separating like whether or not you feel like it, doesn't matter. <laughs> And then the third thing is to find an accountability partner because the fact of the matter is I can set up my meditation in my calendar and it can be there, but when the moment hits and I'm supposed to sit down and I'm supposed to turn on my um, meditation music, in that moment I might choose not to do it and that's been the pattern. So in that moment I may really need to reach out to somebody and say, hey, Will you keep me honest? I'm supposed to be meditating right now. I don't want to do it. I'm afraid. I'm afraid of what I'm, what I'm feeling and discovering um, as a result of my meditations. And that person can say, totally get it. Awesome. You're afraid. Let's talk about it. Now you need to hang up the phone and meditate. An accountability partner, that's really, I mean, we're all here because we love coaching and that's the essence of coaching is accountability and we all need that now if you don't have somebody that you can call or Skype or email or have whatever in the multitude of ways that you can get in touch with people then it's that's why it's great to be in a training program that's why it's great to be at a live event so you almost have like an instant community where you can find someone that you can reach out to and say hey will you be my accountability partner on XYZ and then finally, I think uh, it's important to set up some kind of reward. You know, when you're, um, when you're actually following through and you're doing these things and not procrastinating anymore, you've tackled some challenging things that you really have had a hard time tackling in the past, then there can be some kind of reward for yourself that you give yourself, and it doesn't have to be monetary. You know, it can be sitting down and reading a book. Maybe you don't let yourself ever do that. Um, it could be taking an afternoon off. It could be anything simple. It doesn't have to be expensive, but it has to be for you and something that you feel like, yeah, this, this, feels, this feels good. <laughs> uh, Lisa, will you be my accountability partner? I love it. <laughs> oh, that's so great. Um, so... Here's the thing, when you're thinking about the task to beat procrastination, one, one final bonus tip I'll give is that, you know, life shifts and changes and the things that you're challenged by now may not be the things that you're challenged by tomorrow. So when you are facing like, oh, I just, I don't want to work today, I feel like putting everything aside, but you have a list of things that you need to accomplish. I have a game that I play with myself where I, I decide, am I gonna start with the hardest thing or am I gonna start with the easiest thing? And I gauge my level of resourcefulness. Not my mood so much, um, because usually these are things I know I have to do. Um, so what I try to decide is, well, how, 
how much energy do I feel I have? Not how much inspiration, just how much energy. And if I feel like I don't have a lot of energy, but I know I need to start accomplishing something, then I start with the easiest thing that I can, just to get myself into it, to get myself on a roll, to get myself into the zone, so I can sort of work up to harder tasks. Then there are other days where I feel like I have plenty of energy and I just want to dive in and do the hardest thing and get it over with. And that to give yourself the flexibility and the freedom to do that based on the amount of energy that you have. So, oh my gosh, oh, Sherika is saying, so afraid to start the program next week, but I must and I will do this. Yes, absolutely. I think one of the things to remember too is that you're most afraid before you're about to have a big breakthrough. So the saying goes, it's always darkest before the dawn. And that's because there's always a breakdown before a breakthrough. If you find yourself um, around something that you're um, procrastinating on and it's really, really triggering you and you're really, really scared, that's not a bad thing. That's actually a sign that you're about to push through a previous or previous stopping point. You're going to a place that's outside your comfort zone and that is where you want to go because that is where the magic happens and you start being able to create and receive all of the things that you want. Kristen, you're starting next week too. That's so great. Um, you and Liz, um, so right before something begins can be a really emotional time. Um, and it can feel like, oh, I just want to, maybe I want to put it off. I don't know. I feel like I'm in the emotional morass. Um, but you're not. You're, it's almost like your mind, body, soul, they're all preparing for what's about to come. And when you get there, when you get to the starting point and you break through that starting moment, there will be relief. And of course, there'll be other, you know, um, growth walls that you'll hit up against. This won't be the only one. But for you to recognize that, you know, procrastination could be showing up because you're about to break through a really big, really old pattern into something exciting and new in your life. And that can feel uncomfortable in the moment. Um, so uh, I just want to, I just want to share with you to, uh, to make sure to leave a comment about what it is that you're going to be doing. What are you going to stop procrastinating on? Um, you're gonna make a decision to stop, and then you're gonna not worry whether or not you feel like it. Find an accountability partner that is the key takeaway. The key takeaway. Um, and setting up a reward for yourself. What's the reward? So we talked a lot about procrastination, about what's underneath it, what's causing it, and then we looked at a sort of a step-by-step -step system to stop, really. Um, and I really want to tell you, I appreciate you for not procrastinating on watching this Facebook Live video. You got this, you got this. And for those of you um, that are coming to Miami next week, I can't wait to see you, I'll give you a big hug, hopefully. Um, and for those of you who won't be in Miami, you'll be there with us in spirit. And I'll be back with you for, for live Tuesday tips on June 6th. And in the meantime, you can watch me on Facebook or Instagram uh, to see beach pictures. Because I'm going to be taking a lot of them because I think I might go not see my, my little girl in a little bathing suit with her little palm trees and her little sunglasses on the beach uh, for the first time playing in the sand. I think it's going to be pretty awesome. So thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Here's to uh, beating procrastination and all of the wonderful emotions and feelings that are behind it for us to discover. Thanks, everybody. Love you guys.